experience driving with their parents at some point. Don't they realize how nerve-wracking it can be learning how to drive? Why must they insist on making it even more difficult? In Driving Lessons by Carolyn and Wes, we see just how difficult things can be. When I got my learner's permit, my mom decided she would teach me how to drive. I didn't see the problem with that at first. I mean, I'd have to spend time with her. That's never good. But in the end, I get to drive the car all by myself, which actually meant spending less time with her in the long run since she wouldn't have to drive me places. So we began to learn, we began to drive. But it wasn't like, step on the gas when you want to go, or brake when you want to stop. No. She said things like, there's a stop sign at the corner. Begin braking now. Or, there are children playing on the sidewalk. You never know when one might dash into the street. You better slow down. And the whole time, she said this in her mom voice, which was like a drill digging into my skull. She'd say, see the minivan? And I'd say, you mean the one two blocks ahead? Yes, it has its brake lights on. You should too. And that whole time, that voice was boring into my brain. Oh look, there's an airplane up ahead. Be careful, it might crash. <laughs> well, maybe not that bad, but you get the point. And my goodness, if I made one little mistake, she'd yell at me like I sold government secrets to Chinese spies. Her voice would get higher and louder. You must pay attention at all times. You can't wave to your friends while going around sharp curves. Like our lives were at stake or something. The yelling was bad, but at least it was a break from the mom voice. Opera singing was better than the mom voice. We drive along and she jabber on. I believe there's a school zone around here somewhere. Slow down to 15 miles per hour. And I'd think, shut up, shut up. Then she'd say, look out for that squirrel. And I'd think, what do I have to do to shut your fat face up? Drive into a brick wall? Of course, I didn't say that. I knew my mother. She'd take it the wrong way. <laughs> After each lesson, I'd go home and I'd beg my dad, please, please, for the love of God, teach me how to drive. But he taught my brother how to drive. So he was just like, no, thank you. I don't need that aggravation. <laughs> so the lessons with my mother continued. 8 a.m. every Saturday morning. That's another thing. She'd wake me up at 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning to go driving. Who drives at 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning? The woman's just not sane. In that voice, it began to follow me around in my dreams. Step on the brake! Watch out! Slow down. I wasn't getting any rest. I began to chew my fingernails and I developed a facial tip. <laughs> I had to stop before I lost my mind. Then I figured it out. Instead of letting her use the mom voice, I'd make her use the screaming voice. I drove really close to parked cars. That made her gasp. I took curves at higher and higher speeds. That made her yell. I drove really close to parked cars while taking curves at high speed. <laughs> That's what did it. That made her scream. It was like music to my ears. <laughs> One time, I even got the car up on two wheels. I don't know what screamed louder, the car or my mother. <laughs> Finally, it was her to go home and beg my dad to teach me how to drive. He still said no. He can be so stubborn. <laughs> It was fun messing with my mother. The mom voice went away. No more bad dreams. The only pitfall was that the screaming left it ringing in my ear. <laughs> but that was okay. I could live with that. I didn't realize there was a problem until about two months later when I said, hey, when can I take that driver's test? My mom raised her head up high and said rather snootily, young lady, with the way you've been driving recently, I'm not sure you'll ever be able to take that test. So that was her game. I was going to have to behave if I wanted to get my license. So I played the good girl card. I wore pink, put my hair up in pigtails. Whenever she said, do this or stop that, I said very politely, yes, mommy dearest. Of course the mom voice came back. I dealt with it as best I could. I began to grind my teeth 
my mom got out of the car and the cop got it. He was stern looking and quiet. As in, really quiet. Like, he didn't say anything. We started the car and began to drive along. I waited for him to say, there's a stop sign at the corner. Begin breaking now. But he didn't say a word. And I didn't know when to start breaking. <laughs> at the last minute, I realized we were going to run the stop sign, so I slammed on the brakes. <laughs> we were jolted forward and back. I had a red mark from the shoulder strap. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised the airbags didn't deploy. <laughs> then, I waited for the screaming. Because at this point, my mom would start screaming. But he didn't say anything. He just made a note on his clipboard. That's when I figured it out. All the times my mom was talking, I had heard her, but I hadn't really paid attention to what she was saying. She was saying, when you're this far away from the stop sign, you must begin braking. I would brake, but I didn't realize how far away we were. Needless to say, I did not do well on that test. <laughs> I believe I pulled the record for the lowest score anyone has ever gotten on their driver's test. Anywhere in the world? <laughs> My mom drove home saying, it's okay, you can take it again. But I knew I wasn't going to. The only way I can pass that test, the only way I can drive at all, is if my mom is in the car telling me what to do. Telling me in that voice of hers that, Mom, go 